My narrative of the history of archaeology in Charlotte County has now arrived at about the mid-20th century. From that point, archaeological research became somewhat more coordinated and sustained. So, in the second part of this presentation, I briefly mention some of the major archaeological projects that have been conducted during the past seven decades or so. First, I want to say a few words about the archaeological work that's been conducted on the American side of the Quadi region in Washington County. In the 1940s, Isaac Kingsbury, a medical doctor and avocational archaeologist from Connecticut, and Wendell Hadlock, then curator at the Robert Abbey Museum in Bar Harbor, excavated part of a large coastal site at Eastport, Maine. They published a paper about their work in the Bulletin of the Massachusetts Archaeological Society in 1951. The first page is shown here. The Eastport site consists of an extensive layer of black humic soil interspersed with pit and hearth features extending from the near shore into the intertidal zone. Thus, Kingsbury and Hadlock were among the first to report a type of archaeological feature that I refer to as a black soil midden. Also, they recovered artifacts from the intertidal portions of the Eastport site that are now recognized as dating to the terminal archaic period. Both of these phenomena have become important in my own work. David Sanger studied the stone tools from the Eastport site and published several papers referring to them. In the late 20th century, the Maine Historic Preservation Commission conducted archaeological surveys of the Washington County shorelines, recording and testing several sites. In the 21st century, Gabe Reinick has conducted excavation projects at several shell-bearing sites. This slide shows a harpoon point found at the Reversing Falls site on Cobscook Bay and bifacial tools from the Devil's Head site on the St. Croix Estuary. Dr. Reinick has also taken up the study of prehistoric dwelling features, begun by George Matthew and pursued by David Sanger. The pace of archaeological work in the Canadian Quadi region accelerated from the mid-1950s through renewed attention from museums. Douglas Byers, director of the Peabody Museum of Archaeology at Andover, Massachusetts, launched a major research effort in the coastal northeast. He contracted Theodore Stoddard to investigate sites in the Maritimes. Stoddard's group conducted one major excavation in the Quadi region at a site on Holtz Point. This was the first large-scale modern excavation of a deep Quadi region shell-bearing site. Unfortunately, the results of Stoddard's work have never been completely published. However, one of the more unusual finds from the site, a series of engraved pebbles, have been reported by several authors. By the late 1950s, the National Museum of Man in Ottawa had taken a renewed interest in Maritimes archaeology. The museum hired Richard Pearson, who had an undergraduate degree from the University of Toronto and a doctorate from Yale, to conduct research in the area. Pearson revisited and recorded archaeological sites in all three maritime provinces, but Charlotte County became a focal point of his work. He tested three shell-bearing sites on the northern shores of Pasumquadi Bay, Pagan Point, Minister's Island, and Sandy Point. He commissioned the first formal zooarchaeological studies of Charlotte County sites, which revealed the wide variety of animal remains that some contain. And he obtained the first radiocarbon dates, showing that the coastal prehistoric sites in the county dated largely to the 2,000 years immediately before European contact. Dr. Pearson left the National Museum in the mid-1960s for academic positions in Hawaii and British Columbia where he pursued a career as a specialist in East Asian archaeology. Nevertheless, he published a paper on his Charlotte County research in 1970. David Sanger took up the position of Atlantic Province's archaeologist at the National Museum of Man in the mid-1960s. He held an undergraduate degree from the University of New Brunswick and a doctorate from the University of Washington he had conducted archaeological research in Western Canada before returning to the Maritimes. From the mid-1960s through the early 1970s, Dr. Sanger conducted archaic and woodland period research in several areas of New Brunswick. One of his main initiatives was a long-term multi-site project 
involving mainland coastal sites on Passamaquoddy Bay, including those tested by Pearson. Sanger and his students and colleagues conducted large area excavations at several sites. From these, he further developed chronometric dating and the culture history sequence. He brought a cultural ecology orientation to explaining the past of Charlotte County, greatly extending the zoo archeological focus begun by Pearson. And he used this information to interpret prehistoric subsistence and settlement patterns, seasons of occupation and seasonal movements at both site and regional scales. Dr. Sanger referred to Quadi region shell bearing sites as wondrous storehouses of information about the past. His excavations revealed a series of features that resembled the hut floors described by George Matthew at Phil's Beach a century earlier. Interpreting prehistoric dwelling features became an enduring focus of his work. In 1973, Dr. Sanger left the National Museum for an academic position at the University of Maine at Orono, where he remained for the balance of his career. There, he conducted coastal research in Washington County and archaic period research in the interior of the state, and he published prodigiously on the prehistory of both sides of the international boundary. In 1970, a dramatic change began in New Brunswick archaeology when Christopher Turnbull took up the position of provincial archaeologist, a position he held for the next 30 years. He had completed an undergraduate degree at the University of British Columbia and a doctorate at the University of Calgary. Dr. Turnbull had conducted archaeological research in Western Canada before moving to the Maritimes. Chris Turnbull developed the Archaeological Services Division of the provincial government, updated the heritage legislation, and oversaw the initial regulation of cultural resource management archaeology in the province. He pushed archaeology in new directions with initiatives in underwater archaeology, historic archaeology, and by reporting Paleo-American find spots. Under Turnbull's supervision, the provincial government became a major supporter of research archaeology in cooperation with several universities. Turnbull began teaching archaeology part-time at the University of New Brunswick, and he brought a series of younger researchers into the discipline. Initially, Dr. Turnbull's research attentions were drawn to the Mi'kma'ki and Wolostukuk areas of the province, where he became involved in research in the Grand Lake Meadows and at Red Bank on the lower Miramichi River. However, after the mid-1970s, concerns with the destruction of the coastal archaeological record drew more of his attention. Another century storm struck coastal Charlotte County on February 2, 1976 caused by an unusual weather pattern that coincided with high tides. The Groundhog Day storm added a surge of one and a half meters or more onto the high tide. The surfaces of archaeological sites were disturbed as trees were thrown over by the wind and the waves cut fresh erosional scarps onto the shoreward edges of many coastal sites. This event led Chris Turnbull to direct more provincial resources to documenting coastal archaeology, including renewed site surveys. At UNB, he supervised an honor student, Jennifer Bishop, who restudied the artifacts George Matthew had recovered from the Phil's Beach site, and a master student, Dimini Hammond, who completed a thesis that followed up on the Peabody excavation at Holtz Point. Turnbull himself tested a shell bearing site at Gooseberry Point on Campobello Island. Another initiative was his experiment in coastal site protection the building of a gabion structure to protect the shoreward edge of the Minister's Island shell bearing site that the National Museum researchers had partly excavated. This diagram shows the structure of the seawall. And this photo shows it after 35 years in place. The seawall slowed erosion, but now, after four decades, the archaeological site has begun to erode again around its margins. The career of another significant contributor to Charlotte County archaeology, Stephen Davis, spans the transition from National Museum-sponsored to New Brunswick government-sponsored archaeology in the county. Davis, who had an undergraduate degree from UNB, worked on Sanger's Passamaquoddy Bay project as a student and, at Memorial University, completed a master's thesis on the Teacher's Cove site. He went on to complete a doctorate at Oxford taught archaeology at St. Mary's University in Halifax for many years, 
and directed a cultural resource management company. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Dr. Davis conducted several of New Brunswick Archaeological Services coastal surveys in Charlotte County. He published a paper on the Ruin Islet Groundstone Axe Cache and a Canadian Geographic article calling attention to the threatened state of the coastal archaeological record. In 1978, his master's thesis became the first in the New Brunswick Provincial Government series of archaeological publications. Parenthetically, this illustration presents another redrawn page from Dr. Winnenberg's notes, showing that A.O. Hayes excavated at a site on Mill Cove, of which Teacher's Cove is part, in 1915. In fact, Hayes perhaps excavated at the Teacher's Cove site itself. The crossouts on Winnenberg's notes indicate some confusion about the site's identity and location. Chris Turnbull and Steve Davis participated in the Council of Maritime Premiers Committee for Archaeological Cooperation, which funded a series of surveys, analyses, and publications during the 1970s and 1980s. Several of the publications are illustrated here. I first became involved in Charlotte County archaeology in 1981 through the kindness and generosity of Chris Turnbull and Jennifer Bishop. I participated in the excavation supervised by Bishop at Partridge Island, just offshore from Deer Island. Partridge Island is a deep, multi-component shell-bearing site spanning the time from 2,400 years ago to 1,000 years ago. It has complex stratigraphy and contains dwelling floors, pits, shell middens, and other features. Jennifer Bishop and I both completed master's theses at McMaster University. Our analyses refined the chronology and culture history of coastal Charlotte County. We revealed the distinction between shell middens and black soil middens, and we showed that at least some archaeological sites on islands in the Quadi region are better preserved than sites that had previously been studied on the mainland. Both theses were published by the provincial government. I went on to conduct coastal surveys on Grand Manan, to test sites on Deer Island, and to develop a long-term research project on the Bliss Islands, all under the auspices of Archaeological Services and McMaster University. Then, in 1991, I was hired to teach archaeology at the University of New Brunswick in Fredericton. I directed field schools in Charlotte County and supervised a series of graduate students who were involved in this work. In 1983, I tested a series of shell bearing sites that Steve Davis had recorded on the Bliss Islands, just offshore from Black's Harbor, and surveyed the islands for additional sites. Over the next decade, I conducted excavations at several of these sites. When local residents visited my excavations, I had the same experience that Andrew Adams had in the 1860s. Fishermen marveled at the large size of some of the prehistoric clams. My activities brought me into contact with local artifact collectors. They brought an intertidal site on the Bliss Islands, the Rum Beach site, to my attention. This led to studies of stone tools and the terminal archaic period. I began a detailed investigation of the middle-late maritime woodland transition, documenting changes in stone tool technology and lithic material use. My first graduate supervisee at UNB, Cheyenne MacDonald, wrote a master's thesis on lithic materials analysis. I'll say much more about the prehistory of the Bliss Islands in subsequent presentations. The Bliss Islands are currently named for Samuel Bliss, a loyalist who was banished from Massachusetts, joined the British military, and petitioned to receive the islands as a land grant at the end of the American Revolution. In 1783-84, Bliss built a house on the islands and lived there with his family until his death in 1803. I recorded the foundation of Bliss's house as an archaeological site in 1983. And in 1992, I supervised a field school that excavated an area immediately adjacent to the foundation. This was the first formal excavation of a single component historic period shell bearing site in Charlotte County.
historic archaeology has received less attention in Charlotte County than it deserves. This slide lists a sample of historic buildings in the St. Andrews area, including Reverend Samuel Andrews' house on Minister's Island, built just a few years after Samuel Bliss built his house. Archaeological services conducted excavations on the ground of Sheriff Andrews' house in the 1990s, and the province has explored the historic archaeology of Minister's Island as well as the prehistory as it has developed the Van Horn Estate as a tourism attraction. Parks Canada conducted some excavations at the St. Andrews Blockhouse when the building was reconstructed, and Parks has participated in studies involving the Roosevelt Campobello and the St. Croix Island International Parks. In the early 1980s, when I was first working in the Quadi region, Parks Canada proposed the development of a marine park in the northern West Isles. This would have been, in my opinion, a boon to archaeological research and protection of archaeological resources in the area. Unfortunately, the plan never came to fruition. During the early 1990s, Susan Blair, a graduate student I supervised at UNB, followed up on the archaeological work I began on Gra the Grand Manan Archipelago in 1983. Blair recorded additional sites, tested known sites, and examined private artifact collections. While her work showed that Aboriginal people had lived on Grand Manan in the distant past, it also showed that only very recent prehistoric sites were preserved above the high water line. She conducted excavations at a black soil midden on Grand Harbor and a shell bearing site on Cheney Island. Her master's thesis focused on the late prehistory of the archipelago, especially evidence of lithic materials exchange. Blair went on to employment with archaeological services, where she directed the archaeological mitigation of the Gemsite Crossing site on the Grand Lake Meadows. She wrote a doctoral dissertation based on that site at the University of Toronto, and for several years she directed a private sector heritage consulting firm. Then, in 2006, Dr. Blair was hired to teach archaeology at the University of New Brunswick. Susan Blair has continued her research in Charlotte County, leading undergraduate field schools, directing excavations, and supervising the work of graduate students. These photos show her testing a site on the Park Islands and examining a site at Sam Moore's Pond, both places now New Brunswick Nature Trust properties. Blair has specialized in studying the late prehistoric and contact periods and in understanding Aboriginal fishing and boating strategies. Her research provides a Canadian Quadi region counterpart to the work her colleague at UNB, Gabe Reinick, is conducting on the American Quadi region. The Deer Island Point site is located near the base camp that Jennifer Bishop established for the Partridge Island Archaeology Project. As a result, Deer Island Point is the first archaeological site that I observed in New Brunswick. Later, it was surface collected by local aid vocational archaeologist Bob Bozin. The site consists of an extensive intertidal zone into which artifacts are being eroded from several places around its margins. The artifacts span the periods from the late archaic to the early historic periods. More than two decades after I first visited it, early in the new millennium, a graduate student I was supervising, Drew Gilbert, excavated some test units into the remaining land-based portions of the Deer Island Point site. He completed a master's thesis based on his excavations and on Bob Bozine's collections and interpreted the site as part of a traditional portage route bypassing the old Sao marine whirlpool. Through to the 1990s, archaeological information about the interior of Charlotte County mainly consisted of isolated finds, with few sites being recorded. Canal Beach on Lake Utopia had long been collected for artifacts, and archaeological services tested an archaic site there in the 1970s. However, the extent of earlier occupations in the interior did not become clear until the new millennium. In the late 1990s, Brent Suddy, then an undergraduate at UNB, brought me a collection of archaic artifacts from the shores of Mill Lake near Lake Utopia. In the early 2000s, as a graduate student under my supervision, Suddy recorded and tested several sites on the shores of Mill Lake. 
two of which yielded what were then the two oldest archaeological radiocarbon dates from New Brunswick at 6,000 and 7,000 years ago. His master's thesis reported middle and late archaic assemblages from Mill Lake and Lake Utopia. Subsequently, as an employee of archaeological services, Suddy continued surveying and recording sites along the Macadavic River. Cultural resource management archaeology began in New Brunswick during the 1980s, but only became a substantial force in the 1990s with the Gemsafe Crossing Project, part of the construction of the twinned Trans-Canada Highway. By the turn of the century and into the new millennium, legally mandated CRM archaeology conducted as part of infrastructure development projects became routine. Now most archaeological fieldwork conducted in New Brunswick is CRM work. In Charlotte County, most CRM archaeology has been in the interior as part of gas pipeline construction and highway improvements. Since the turn of the century, large amounts have been spent on these archaeological mitigation efforts. I briefly refer to two such projects here, one coastal and one interior. The coastal project involved the mitigation of archaeological sites at Wallace Cove in the run-up to rebuilding the Graham and Ann Ferry Terminal near Blacks Harbor. First, an intertidal flaked stone assemblage was collected, indicating that a terminal archaic site was eroding from beneath part of the existing ferry terminal. Subsequently, testing of the area revealed a late woodland feature on a bedrock outcrop at the high water line. As Highway 1 through Charlotte County was completely twinned between 2008 and 2012, several new rights of way were developed. On one of these, near Penfield Ridge, archaeologists working for an engineering firm found the scraper shown in the photo at the right. This stone tool resembled some made by Paleo-Americans at the end of the last glaciation and it is made of chert from Monsungan Lake, Maine, a material often used by Paleo-Americans in the Maine Maritimes area. The photo on the left shows archaeological testing on the Highway 1 right-of-way. In 2011, excavations in this area, directed by Brent Suddy, Manager of Archaeological Services, revealed a series of prehistoric components, some dating to the Archaic and Woodland periods. However, the assemblage that has drawn the most attention includes diagnostic Paleo-American fluted projectile points made of Munsungan chert. With this find, the time depth of human history in Charlotte County has been almost doubled from about 7,000 years ago to perhaps as much as 13,000 years. The history of archaeology in Charlotte County parallels the history of archaeology in other parts of Canada with periods dominated successively by antiquarian, natural history, museum, academic, government, and private sector archaeological activities. However, with the exception of the first, the inception of each of these types of archaeology has lagged behind many other parts of the country and the continent. Rising sea levels, shoreline erosion, clearing, construction, and agricultural activities have exposed archaeological artifacts and sites throughout the historic period and before. Inquisitive residents of Charlotte County probably always have collected objects made by their ancestors and predecessors. These avocational activities continue to the present. During the late 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, archaeological research in Charlotte County was conducted by natural historians with broad interests whose primary education and training involved other academic disciplines and pursuits. Much of this work was descriptive and ahistorical, but served important inventory functions. The current culture historical understanding of Charlotte County's past is largely the result of academic and government-sponsored surveys and excavations conducted during the second half of the 20th century. This developing archaeological history is comprised of sketches of changing human adaptations to Charlotte County's spatially and temporally dynamic and highly productive natural environments. The recent spate of government-mandated private sector cultural resource management archaeology has been extensive and expensive. The results of this work remain largely occulted and unintegrated 
with interpretations based on academic archaeological work. This map shows many of the locations referred to in the presentation. This slide and the ones following present a selected bibliography and references for the information presented. Please note that in this presentation, I clarified and modernized the wording of some of the quotes from 19th and early 20th century authors. This slide and the one following show sources and credits for photographs and illustrations used. Thanks to Gabe Reinick and Allison Ireland for their help with making the video clips. This presentation was posted online in remembrance of the Boardman Baird picnic at Oak Bay in September 1869 and the destruction wrought by the Saxby Gale a month later at the 150th anniversary of those events.